Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you came to listen to our song and story. We have a special program planned and hope you enjoy it. Have a wonderful day. Today we want to sing a familiar song for you. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. That is our prayer that God will keep us as his witnesses. Jesus, don't we, Nathaniel? Yeah. Yes. It says, touch and feel farm. Here's a little chicken. Look at this. Can you feel him? <gasps> Ooh, look at this. Feel the soft, fluffy chicks. See the soft, fluffy chicks? Let's look at the next page. <gasps> Pet the velvety, smooth horse. What's a horsey? Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, tickle the sheepdog's furry tummy. Tickle, 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 tickle. How does it feel when you get tickled? Tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> How about this one? Touch the lamb's thick woolly coat. Oh, that feels so good. Feel that? Yeah. Or maybe scratch the piglet's bristly head. Ooh, that is bristly. <laughs> That's bristly. Yeah, those are the animals that live on the farm. Touch and feel farm. There we go. All right. It's called Cactus Hotel, Nathaniel. A lady named Brenda Giberson wrote the words, and Megan Lloyd drew the pictures. Cactus Hotel. All right, let's open it up, Andrew. On a hot, dry day in the desert, a bright red fruit falls from a tall saguaro cactus. Wow. It splits apart on the sandy floor. 2,000 black seeds glisten in the sunlight. After many dry days, a heavy rain falls on the desert. Soon a young cactus sprouts up from the ground. Slowly, the seedling grows. The Palo Verde protects it from the hot summer sun and cold winter nights. After 10 years, the cactus is only four inches high. It is just big enough for desert ants to climb its spiny sides. After a rainstorm, when the desert blooms with color, the cactus pulls in water with its long roots and looks fat. A young pack rat stops to drink the water that drips off the tree. Then she scurries off, looking for a dry place to make a nest. When there is no rain, the cactus uses up the water it has stored inside and looks thin. The Palo Verde loses its tiny leaves, but there is always some shade for the cactus below. After 25 years, the cactus is two feet tall. A jackrabbit cools off beside it and gnaws on the green pulp. But when a coyote moves in the distance, the jackrabbit disappears into a nearby hole. <laughs> After 50 years, the cactus stands 10 feet tall and looks straight and strong beside the old Palo Verde. For the first time, brilliant white and yellow flowers appear at the very top of the cactus. Every spring from now on, the flowers will open for one night only and then close in the heat of the day. They beckon like a welcoming signal across the desert. At different times of the day and night, birds, bees, and bats come for the nectar. The flowers dry up, and after a month, the bright red fruit filled with black seeds is ripe and ready. A gilla woodpecker comes to eat. He looks around the cactus and decides to stay. He's found the perfect place in the desert to begin a new hotel. 
The woodpecker goes right to work, and the only tool he uses is his long, hard beak. Tap, tap, tap. He bores into the flesh of the cactus. Tap, tap, tap. He digs deeper inside to make a space that is comfortable and roomy. The cactus is not harmed. It forms a tough scab all around the hole to protect itself from drying out. The woodpecker gets a weatherproof nest that is shady on hot days and warm and insulated on frosty nights. And the cactus gets something in return. The woodpecker likes to eat the insects that can bring disease to the cactus. After 60 years, the cactus hotel is 18 feet tall. To add more space, it begins to grow an arm. A woodpecker has a new hole in the trunk. Farther up, a white-winged dove makes a nest in the arm. Down below, an old hole is discovered by an elf owl. The birds feel safe living high up in the prickly plant where nothing can reach them. Nathaniel, how would you like to live on a cactus? What do you think? I could climb one. You think you could climb one? Yeah, and make a hole. <laughs> Might be a little prickly though, huh? Yeah. All around the desert, there are holes of every size for ants and mice, lizards and snakes, rabbits and foxes. After 150 years, there are holes of every size in the cactus too. The giant plant has finally stopped growing. It is 50 feet tall with seven long branches. It weighs eight tons, about as much as five automobiles. Everybody wants to live in the Cactus Hotel. Birds lay eggs and pack rats raise their young. Even insects and bats live there. When one animal moves out, another moves in. And every spring they come for a special treat of nectar and juicy red fruit. Finally, after 200 years, the old cactus sways in a gust of wind and falls with a thud to the sandy floor. Its great thorny arms crumble in the crash. Lived up high must find other homes. But those that prefer to live down low move right in. A millipede, a scorpion, and many ants and termites quickly find homes in the toppled hotel. After many months, all that remain are the wooden ribs that supported the cactus while it stood so tall. A collared lizard dashes over the top looking for insects. A ground snake huddles in the shade below, and all around there is a forest of cacti slowly growing in the desert. Through hot and cold, wet and dry, some will survive long enough to become other cactus hotels. Cactus Hotel. The other book that we wanted to share with you today is called Paul's Great Basket Caper. It's written by Larry Bergdorf, and the pictures are by Dave Hill. A couple thousand years ago, a man named Paul went to and fro. He did the very best he could to do what he considered good. He was a man who had a plan, and very quickly he began to put all Jesus' friends in jail and never let them out on bail. But then on the Damascus road, he saw a brilliant light that glowed. A voice said, Saul, can you not see that you are persecuting me? The brilliant light was powerful. The voice was so incredible. The vision so immensely strong. Saul realized that he'd been wrong. Then all of life was changed for Saul. He even became known as Paul. His enmity came to an end, and Jesus was his dearest friend. Now he told everyone it's true, that Jesus lived and died for you. He paid for all your sins, he said, and he is risen from the dead. This so enraged Paul's former friends. Just think, they said, what this pretends. If folks believe what they are told, we'll soon be left out in the cold. If everybody follows him, our chances will be very slim to keep the leadership that's ours. We may lose all of our powers. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Oh. To solve this problem once for all, the men decided to kill Paul. They had some killers lie in wait at each and every city gate. Like many cities of the day, Damascus kept its foes away by building huge high walls of stone, one entered by the gates alone. Nathaniel, how are they going to let Paul escape? How was he going to get out? Bye. 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 Those the red man <coughs> can get him out. You think so? Let's see. Paul headed for Jerusalem, but first he had to get by them. He chose the most unusual way to leave Damascus on that day. His friends brought ropes, both stout and long. They got a basket, big and strong. Into the basket they put Paul and let him down outside the wall. Think what a basket full that was. It was so critical because God mightily then used this man to carry out his mission plan. Paul sailed the seas and walked the earth and preached for all that he was worth. To earn his way, he'd sow a tent, then wrote half the New Testament. Paul preached to Jews and Gentiles, too. He said, the Savior came for you. He died to pay for all your sin and on the third day rose again. 
This message still is sure and true, for Jesus is your Savior too. With faith in him, you can be sure that you are eternally secure. Paul's Great Basket Caper Thank you so much for watching our song and story today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Okay, should we sing our song? Yeah. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Come, come back, back again, we'll see you soon. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Can you wait? Say bye.